And uh, so we were all speculating of what, you know, I mean, how useless can it be to put do anything up here on the Mesa? It's so hard to get water. There's no transportation, naturally, railroads and so on. It's just a crazy place to do any war thing. Secrecy, my God, you do much better, uh, you know, if secrecy is what you want, you, you do it in the middle of a military uh, uh, organization and a compound. If um, just anything else. So, it, you know, we used to kid, even from the very beginning, that what kind of image have we got? A science fiction type uh, sci-fi here with white-coated scientists. Uh, but, uh, so this was all a background in our sort of speculation kidding the previous month or two before uh, these two guys show up, one wearing a, a pork pie hat, and the other, uh, it was my memory always that he was wearing a fedora. And a fedora was uh, uniquely E.O.L. Lawrence. Uh, of course, the pork pie was, there was just no question that uh, after about half an hour or an hour uh, that this was uh, <clears throat> Oppenheimer. <clears throat> but we knew enough about the issue of the day, whether fission could be used to make a um, chain reaction, an exponentiating reaction by uh, the neutrons or whatever, by the neutrons particularly. And we all knew that as some, you know, kids doing a physics class. And it was on the headlines of papers in those days. But the burning question was, is whether in the fission of uranium, in this case the isotope 235, because even that was known in those days, before the bomb, uh, would it emit enough neutrons to support a chain reaction? So when those two showed up and this place had already been overrun by a mega bulldozer, there was absolutely no question in the minds of a couple of us smart-ass kids that uh, this meant that the fission ratio was greater than two, and therefore without question they would be making a nuclear bomb. We didn't miss name it an atomic bomb, we called it a nuclear bomb. And so when we did leave the Mesa, there were at least half a dozen of us who knew exactly what they were doing, and if two of us who knew exactly how to do it <laughs> without ever, you know, it, 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 physics is physics. You don't, it doesn't, it isn't that big a deal. 14 July, 1700 hours, gadget complete. Should we have the chaplain here? The betting pool cost a dollar. Edward Teller bet on a blast equal to 45,000 tons of TNT. Oppenheimer bet low, 3,000 tons. And I.I. Robbie put his money on 20 kilotons. Young technicians were horrified to overhear Enrico Fermi taking side bets on the possibility of incinerating the state of New Mexico. It's probably because they knew this would create a large cloud and uh, that would uh, really uh, spark people's interest around on, you know, what, what's that big cloud. Had you been outside here in Albuquerque, you would have seen the sky light up uh, and wonder what, what was that. So later years, it turned out, I ended up working for people like um, Bob Wilson, who spent his time here, and I knew some of uh, Feynman, and certainly I worked with Beta a lot. So all of these people who were working here, I could have been uh, been working with much sooner, maybe. Zero-hour bikini for the explosion of America's first airborne hydrogen bomb. Radar weather stations indicate perfect conditions throughout the mid-Pacific proving ground, so the control ship gives the go-ahead. All over the area, skiffs are launched to measure radioactive fallout. 
A final briefing to the crew of the giant B-52, the aircraft chosen to carry out this delicate mission. The bomb itself will explode at 15,000. These pictures, the first to be released, were photographed from 50 miles away. Brighter than 500 suns, America's most highly developed thermonuclear weapon. A detonation equal in force to 10 million tons of TNT. a course north for the Marshall Islands. I want to go and learn about the legacy that remains after the detonation of 67 nuclear weapons. This is Runet Island, home of the Runet Dome, which is a nuclear waste dumping site. This concrete is 18 inches thick and it's sealing off some of the most hazardous material known to mankind. You don't realize how big it is until you walk up here. What's inside this dome is a lot of nuclear waste. It's the topsoil off the islands that they claimed. There were chunks of plutonium and any of these that were found were gathered up and put inside this tomb as well. Cesium-137 has a half-life of about 30 years, which means every 30 years it gets 50% weaker. But plutonium-239 has a half-life of 24,000 years. So this place is going to be radioactive for thousands and thousands of years to come. From the top of the dome, 100 metres away, there's another crater from yet another detonation. You can see the whole reef is just blown out in a perfect circle. This concrete dome is just like a band-aid. It's already cracking, and with the sea levels rising and the erosion along the coast, it's only a matter of time before this starts leaching out. This is a legacy that's left over after the nuclear testing here in the Marshall Islands. It's just this massive scar on the landscape, on the world, that our future generations have to live with and deal with, none more so than the Marshallese people. I've been here long enough. It's time to get going. You can use our basement. Your basement? What about your shelter? We've got to get into a shelter. It's the only place we can survive. I don't have any room, Jerry. Well, just, just give us a chance. No, 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 no. 48 no. hours, Bill, then we'll get out. When that door gets closed and locked, it stays closed and locked, Jerry. There'll be radiation and heaven knows what else. None of you wanted Please, to listen Bill. to build a shelter was to admit to the kind of age we lived in, and none of you had the guts to face that. Yeah. So now you've got to face something far worse, Jerry. No, so God... Please, God, protect you, Jerry. It's out of my hands. No. It's simply out of my hands. No, Hi, my name is Howard C2, and we're here to look at some of the uh, legacy of one of the principal uh, developers of the uh, atomic bomb. And this was the successor bomb to the H-bomb, or not the, the uh, fission bombs that were dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And one of the things that the developer of that bomb had done was he had built a bomb shelter here, and we're going to be exploring that. Now, uh, we got a little dinky do here, and then we got a sort of a glass wall and go this way. Mm -hmm. 
So here we are inside the, the bomb shelter. It's obviously being used for something out there with bombs. Of course, they got a, a fair number of wine here. I guess they make a shelter here and drink wine at the same time. But anyway, it's not much of a shelter, but big enough. It looks like a number of people could stay here and, if necessary, sleep here if necessary. And uh, it's pretty ingenious that well, they just built it in the side of a hillside. Yeah, so they can actually weather the, the fallout after a blast. It looks like maybe there's a battery backup sort of light here in case something does happen. <laughs> 